Last week, us girl hosts hit Jariah with the tough questions. Now it's Jariah's turn. Anna and Bella are trying another spicy food. Find out if they can take the heat. Have professors gone easy on us, or have they made classes even harder? We'll get into it today. This is The College Voice. Hi everybody, I'm Valencia. Welcome back to The College Voice. I'm sitting here with Alex and we have Mackenzie and Jariah over in the control room. How are y'all feeling on this beautiful Friday morning? I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. good. Yeah, I'm, I'm also feeling good. Got um, some colors on. It's a, I was kind of sad though because yesterday was really nice out. So nice. Yeah, and like was. today's really windy and kind of grimy yeah. and it makes me sad. But Let's what about y'all in the control room? room? Let's keep I literally got no sleep last night because of the wind, but it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Okay, okay. Well, Joe Biden recently signed the American Rescue Plan that included a third stimulus check. This one is different from the last two because it's $1,400 and includes college dependents. College students who are still being claimed by their parents were left out of the last two, even though we're struggling like all other adults. Some parents are ready and willing to hand over the extra $1,400 check, but others are keeping the money all the to themselves while their college dependent students are struggling. Do y'all think parents should give their college dependents like a little chunk of that money or like a little or give them the whole thing or how do you feel? I don't know. I, cause like as a, as a student, as a, I guess a dependent, mm -hmm. um, I guess as a dependent <laughs> of my parents, I'm still dependent. Mm -hmm. Um, I would, I know that they said that they, like if they were going to get the stimulus check that they mm -hmm. would give it to me and so I appreciate that mm -hmm. and like as a student I would really appreciate that money especially right. if it's like if it's supposed to technically be mine. Mm. Um, but I think that's like an actual conversation that like you have to have with your parents like mm -hmm. as adults because yes you're dependent but like you're over 18 now there might be like right. financial reasons why you're still dependent that work best for your family. Right. So I feel like it's harder to just be like no I want my money it's like well, like, how how is that going to kind of yeah. take? You don't. Uh, there are other disagree. things that are at play with this because you have to be mindful. There are some <laughs> college dependents, like there's, what's the word? Like it fluctuates between like how much some students are dependent rather than other students. Right. But I get what y'all are saying, but I mean, as a college dependent, I am depending on that money, so I feel like <laughs> I need the money. That means. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I feel I like. I will say though. Yeah. Like, I think it's unique to everybody's certain situation because some parents are paying for car payments or insurance yeah, or exactly. phone bills, and they could use that money to pay that. I mean, it just yeah, it just depends, honestly. That's what, what's what happening. Your parents are giving it you. depends, and you depend it's, on the money. So I mean, yeah, you're <laughs> like, you stop saying that. Anyway, I just think you need to get it. Then they're basically giving you that money through other things. They're not just handing you over the fourteen. That's what's happening. With I get what you're. I get what you're saying, but it's yeah. like. Okay, for some, for example, sometimes for a gift, it's like you can either get an actual gift that they already paid for or some money that you can use however you would like to. Right. I feel like getting that yeah. money gives you the opportunity to either go get some groceries, go get the book that you need, what whatever kind of school things you need. What are we actually going to spend that money on? Clothes, shoes. Okay, okay. okay. But, but I think Jariah's point is it's our money. And I need it now. And, and I need it now. <laughs> but it's, it's yeah. our, if, if it's my money, then I should be allowed to spend it how I want to. Yeah. And so that totally makes sense. Um, what uh, Mackenzie was saying is actually happening with my roommate. Like, my roommate is technically getting a check, but her parents are kind of giving it to her through different things because her parents are, like, they're paying for um, her part of the rent, for mm -hmm. other things, and so they're kind of doing it that way. Also, my Man. friend is a little much, like, if we go to five and below, she's definitely spending more than five dollars. So mm -hmm. I think they're just a little worried about where that yeah. money is about to go if she just gets I all of it. I think, wait, hold on, hold on. Parents who are, like, carrying <coughs> the load, like, paying their students rent, paying their car note payment, I think it's completely fine that they keep all that stimulus check because that's the whole reason. Wait, we have to look at it, like, um, instead of, a parent with a college dependent, think of it as a parent with like a, a 16 year old kid. Like it's the same thing because they're financially responsible for that person. 
but what we depend like on the money what but if you don't give if you don't give me the money to at least make the decision myself so i can try to you know learn how to be independent I'll always be depending on you, you know what I mean? Like, I don't mean to just but keep saying that. But that should have been happening. But that yeah. that lesson should have been learned a Long while time. ago and not with $1,400. And I was going to say, why don't, we'll keep it fair, parents give the, the kid $400 to keep a 1000 or, you right. know, some, little, like, you know give them a little bit to spend mm-hmm. wherever they want and decide what they want to do with it. But then keep that 1000 or whatever to spend wisely and you know it's going to go where it needs to go. I think giving the students the money is going to allow them to grow because it's like, all right, here's here's a good amount of money. Now you need to make the correct decisions with it because if you don't, then obviously you're going to learn what adulting is and you do not make the decision that you need to make. I agree. On the things that I need. Like, I don't really just shop like that. Okay. I'm going to spend it on clothes. Well, whether you received a stimulus check or not, we hope you are doing all right during this hard time. But some things that never fail to cheer someone up is a nice snack to eat, or in this case, a new snack to try. Let's see how our favorite te- taste tester spice it up this week with a spicy treat. As you know, Bella and I are always keeping it spicy on Taste Test Tuesday, and this week we tried sp- spicy mochi rice nuggets. Check it out. Hello, Taste Test Tuesday viewers. Today we have crispy, crunchy, Spicy mochi rice nuggets. Nice nuggets. <laughs> I really don't know what to expect out of these. Um, I'm confused. I thought mochi was like Japanese ice cream. <laughs> you want a nice rice nugget? <laughs> well, on the back it says made from the same glutinous rice as a soft and chewy, sweet Japanese oh, favorite mochi. Okay, okay. Spicy mochi nuggets hit the other end of the spectrum. A fiery snack that you might not be able to stop eating. Well, we'll have to see about that one. Let me see this. Smells like this barbecue. looks like me and Anna. <laughs> <laughs> On the back. They're a very weird shape. Yeah, like they're not a perfect square. Like it's almost like a popcorn shape. Yeah, kind of. All right. Crunchy. Crispy. Very crunchy. And spicy. That's a mild spice. Yeah, it's not bad. It tickles your tongue a bit. Tickles your throat a little bit. Yeah, that too. But I don't think it has a lot of flavor. Mm-hmm. It does not have a lot of flavor at all. Like, it really is just crispy, crunchy, and spicy. But no flavor. No flavor. Yeah, it's just those three things, but not a specific flavor. Mm-hmm. I mean, I taste rice, I guess. Yeah, it tastes like a spicy rice cake. So crunchy. Yeah, I don't like how crunchy they are. It takes you forever to chew it up. Mm-hmm. And if someone was eating these next to me, I'd punch them in the face. Because <laughs> <laughs> I hate the sound of chewing. So if someone's eating these next to me, I'm gonna scream. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know who would choose to snack on these. They're just, they are pretty spicy, but it doesn't have a flavor. It doesn't have a flavor. <laughs> it's just like my like throat is like on fire a little bit in the back of my tongue. Yeah, definitely. Which, it's on like the back side of your tongue. Yeah, it's vicious. But <sighs> like, if you like hot Cheetos and Takis, um, but you wanna go for a healthier alternative. Or is it healthier? Or is it? Well, you know, I just don't like spice, especially if it's flavorless. Like, if my mouth is just on fire for no freaking reason, why would I eat it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, the, you don't really have a reason to eat these unless you just want a spicy sensation. But the only reason I'm eating more right now is because I didn't eat lunch. Yeah, same. So it's not cheese puff texture. No. It's thicker. It's not as airy. Right. More starchy. Yeah. It says a fiery snack that you might not be able to stop eating. I can stop eating. Out of 10, I'd give the mochi rice nuggets a 6 out of 10 because, I mean, it doesn't say it's supposed to have a flavor. It literally just says crispy, spicy, and crunchy. So, like, I mean, they advertised it as it was. I don't really know what I was expecting. Uh, I'd give it a 5 out of 10. Losing (laughs) points because... I'm never gonna eat these again. The top three things that I felt while eating this is crispy, crunchy, spicy. Well, we're always keeping it spicy on Taste Test Tuesday. See you next week, bye.
think of the rice nuggets. I'm not feeling it. Was it like crouton crunchy? Yes, yes, it crouton. was like that because it, like Anna said, it wasn't airy. It wasn't like a cheese puff texture. Like it was harder. Like we Ew. were crunching. I would say harder than a crouton. Wow. Honestly. You think? So you almost broke I'd a tooth? No, no. Not like hard candy. Honestly, I'd say the consistency is most similar to a crouton, but yeah. it was just thicker. Oh. I don't know. And like we just kept saying, like there wasn't a flavor. It was like the weirdest thing to describe. Like it, we just like felt the spice in our mouth, but you weren't like It wasn't tasting like barbecue anything. or like salt. It wasn't salty. No, really. it wasn't. It was literally spicy. It was like the weirdest <laughs> sensation to describe, but like on the bag it said crunchy, spicy, and what Crispy. else? Crispy. <laughs> and it was all three of those things and nothing more, nothing less. <laughs> it was like the weirdest sensation. <laughs> That sounds gross. I know. <laughs> not you guys gross. It just doesn't, like, it's not giving me anything. Yeah. No, well, it sounds less. gross. Because, like, I want flavor in my food. Right. I don't want to just eat. If I wanted no flavor, I would just drink some water, and at least then I know that I'm being healthy. Um, <laughs> right. But, like, having <laughs> just, like, crunchy spice nuggets, <laughs> that just kind of reminds me. I don't know if anyone sees, like, that show Hot Ones where they literally just, like, eat wings oh, hotter yeah. and hotter and hotter. Oh, it's fun. like once they get to like they get to like the last three wings and they're really it's just hot. Yeah, yeah. And it's like and it's like why would you want that? Yeah, for what's yourself? the point of that? <laughs> well, this is definitely a spicy one, but things are about to get even more spicy as Jariah has questions for each one of us girls. You won't want to miss it as we return in just ninety seconds. Can we stay here? Does it see race? Love is love. Welcome back. So today, you know, last week the girls got to ask me some questions. Today, I'm gonna get to ask the girls some questions. So, Allie, I'm gonna start off with you. All right. Okay. So the, my first question is: If a relationship works out, does that mean that the man loves the woman more? No. Where does that question come from? That's what I hear often. It's like if if a relationship works out, it's because the man loves the woman more, not because she loves him more. It seems like if the woman loves the man more, then he'll leave or something like that. I think if a relationship works out, it means that the two people involved are mature enough and understanding enough of what love looks like and what love is. It's not a matter of who loves the other person more. It's that they both love each other the way that they're supposed to love each other. Should have came, came a little harder than that. Uh, okay. I mean, look, I got plenty. I got, I got plenty. I got plenty. But I had to get that to you, for, you know, because I know you have a boyfriend. So I'll give you that. All right. So my next question is for Alex. So what is the first thing that you would pay that you pay attention to with the guy you're attracted to? Ooh. <laughs> um. Weirdly enough, I pay attention to like humor. And like, I tend to laugh at everything. I think everyone knows that. Like, I laugh at a lot of things, but because of that, it, it's different for me when it comes to like somebody that I find attractive. It's like, can you make me laugh? And what kind of jokes are you telling? Because some people be making some very like offensive jokes, stuff like mm. that. And I'm like, oh, okay, like that's not for me. So I pay attention to that. I also pay attention to like how he is with his friends. Mm. Um, because like, I know that like when you're with, like, it's the same thing. Like, when I'm with my girls, it's different like when I'm with like someone that I like say and I just say the same thing with guys however like if like you completely switch up 
and you're completely different, that kind of, not a huge red flag, but that's kind of something that I have to like, kind of be like, okay, like you're different with different people. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Is it just because, oh, I feel more comfortable with them than with you at this moment because we just met or something? Mm -hmm. Or is it like you are like putting on a front for me and that's not what I want in a relationship. I want you to be your authentic self because I'm gonna try to be my authentic self. So. Okay, okay. Great answer. So my next question is for Anna. So why do girls fall out over petty stuff? Why do they what? So why do girls basically fall out over some, it seems like very minuscule, minuscule stop things. Being yeah, like y'all stop being friends over like these little petty things. Oh, Yes. Oh, girl. oh yes. Okay, okay. Okay. I thought you meant with guys. I was like, no. okay. Well, personally, for me, I'm very forgiving. Like, I'm still friends with people that have done some like <laughs> kind of bad stuff, but not to me. Like that have hurt my feelings before. I'm not like that, but I know other people are because they just like can't get over them. It's not that they can't get over the girl, they can't get over themselves. Like they can't Ooh. get over their own feelings. Ooh. And personally, I can, so I'm not like that. I get over feelings, I forgive people, but I think some girls just, they can't get over themselves and they're like, wow, I can't, can't mm. do it anymore. Also, I think it depends on what you mean by minuscule, like small thing. Mm. Because sometimes like you are there when like, it broke the camel's back. Like you're there when like it's the last kind of straw yeah. and then everybody blows up. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's just like this person is just like, you know what, if you're gonna act like this, then like we just won't be friends. It's so much, cause sometimes it's just easier to just be like, you know what, you do your thing, I'm gonna do mine. Okay. Let's just kind of separate. Now when people get into like fights and stuff in public, I don't that's, know. That's but good. like right. if they like Yeah, kinda, I agree with that. I think um, it's the straw that broke the camel's back, that's it. It's easier, it's gonna have a less negative impact if we're just not friends anymore. I'm not the way I think, but other people. I hear y'all, I just wanna make sure I get to ask the other girls their questions too, <laughs> cause for Mackenzie, my question is, are you scared to shoot your shot? And why is the answer yes? Ooh! Excuse me? <laughs> <laughs> for your information, okay? I'm okay with shooting my shot mm. um, if I feel it's right. <laughs> Okay. And I've done it before. I have. I've, I have. I've given a guy my number, and I was like, "Hey, I Sound think like you're, you're really cute." Sound like you're convincing yourself right now. Excuse me. Sound like you're trying to convince yourself right now, no, like you no. don't. <laughs> the thing that I'm worried about is um, coming off like desperate, I guess, or like weird to the guy. Like I don't want to put off those vibes at all because I'm not mm. at all. But if I'm really feeling somebody, and I really think like, what do I have to lose? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna shoot my shot and. I'm very big into I want to be chased, but I'm also big into like women, like empowerment. I'm, exactly, and like I can oh, do it too. <clears throat> so that's where like my my problem comes in with like, do I want to be chased or do I want to be like I can make the first move too? But if I'm really feeling it, like I said, I'll make the first move and I'm not scared. But I'm also if I'm not feeling it and like worried that I'm gonna come off desperate, then I'm not gonna do it. So I just have to feel out the vibes, I guess. Okay, it's just interesting that you say like if you have nothing to lose, it's like why look at it, why look at it like that when you have possibly something to gain? I mean, you know, sometimes is mean. Sometimes then, like oh, people oh, be laughing in oh, your oh, face and you're right. like, whoa. <laughs> okay. All right, because girls, I got <laughs> if we got time for it, I got a question for that too. But for Bella, my question for you is, what is something that men just do not seem to understand about women? Oh God. Um, <laughs> A lot of things. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind for me is <coughs> emotion. Um, like, I'm just, I'm a very emotional person. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel everything, and I do have a fault of, like, taking things personally or just, like, expecting so much good out of people that when I don't get it, like, I get really sad and stuff. So I, I think just historically, maybe I've just had a problem, like, with men, like, not understanding that I feel so deeply. And, you know, like, I've been told, like, you can't let that bother you. You can't, like... You can't get so like worked up about this, and like, I just think that that's a, just a problem in mm. general. But I'm not sure why. I maybe it's because of you know the things that have been in society for so long, where men aren't supposed to show emotion and women are. So I don't know if it, that's the problem, like where it's still really prevalent. But mm. I know in my personal experience, that's something like men have not been able to understand as fully as I wish. It's just that we are very well, not all of us though. Mm. I'm very emotional. Okay, all right. 
Um, it was fun for all of the hosts to get to know each other better for these last few episodes. Coming up, Jirai is going to show us a playlist that he has tailored towards Women's History Month. Stay tuned for that after the break. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover their unique mix of all kinds of traits. Where'd Wiley go? Where's Wiley? Ah, oh, there she is. Pa? Do you remember being an ancient wolf? Do you ever feel the call of the wild? You're a renegade cop, and I'm a con woman with nothing to prove. But together, we could really solve this murder. They're a little bit of a lot of things. But all of them are pure love. Roll over. Chance high five. All right. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover all the things that make them unique. And your mother and... I am totally a hot person. Right, guys? Thanks for being honest. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Adopt pure love at the shelterpetproject.org. What's going on? So, y'all, today I just wanted to get into this little playlist that I made. It is called Black Woman Multifaceted, and I wanted to make sure I tailored it to black women because black women have been going through a lot just historically and then especially within the past, the past year. So I wanted to make sure that I made a playlist for y'all. And I definitely am about to set y'all right, so give me one second. Let me go ahead and log into this. But um, the reason why I called it that is because black women are definitely multifaceted, of course. It's like there are a lot of stereotypes about black women and everything, about their um, different moods and just how they are and seen in society. And I was like, let me get, let me get y'all some music to help set the mood and to help offset some of that. And I got so many different artists that I know that y'all like. For example, I know that y'all recently just heard that Flo Millie is gonna be performing for Kent State um, in a few weeks. So I made sure I got her on there. One of my favorite songs by Flo Millie is May I. Uh, when I first heard that song, it was like she was snapping in that song. It's just the beat, the way she was rapping over it. I thought all of that went together extremely well. I also have some Rihanna on there. Because, you know, recently Rihanna, I actually just saw in the news that Re, um, Rihanna spent five calendar years on the Billboard 200, and she's the first black female to do that with an album. So I wanted to give a shout out to her as well, but I know women are missing Rihanna, but I know y'all love Rihanna too, so got her on there. And uh, I got some Beyonce, I got some Destiny's Child, oh, what's that song? It's called Girls by Destiny's Child. I know, obviously, this is for women, and it's like during Women's History Month. So to have a song by Destiny Child called Girls, why wouldn't I have this on the playlist? So yeah, I, I, I just wanted to make sure that I got y'all together for it. Let me go ahead and pull out my phone and really show y'all some of this music. And like, let's, just, let's dissect some of this. All right, so, oh, another song I have on here is called Not Tonight by Lil' Kim. It's uh, Lil' Kim, Angie Martinez, Lisa, Left Eye, Rest in Peace. We share the same birthday. Anyway, it's also, um, uh, who else is on here? I think Queen Latifah, if you see the video, she shows up in the video. Who else? Oh, and like if y'all know what a posse cut is, that's basically where it's a lot of artists that come together and they are all rapping or singing on this one song. So I made sure I got a lot of posse cuts with women because what I tried to do with this playlist was really I tried to make sure that not a single male voice was heard. Like I wanted to let all the voices be black women. Now, there is one song on here that has some men in it, but I think that it's a very fitting song to be on the playlist. And it's called Brown Skin Girl. It's a beautiful song. It was breaking records. Everybody was listening to it. Everybody was doing a little challenge to it. So yeah, but I hope that y'all check out this playlist on Spotify and get y'all hip to it later. But we are gonna go ahead and get into our next combo about professors and everything. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw that right to Anna. Online this semester, it is definitely different than what we are used to. Most professors have switched the way they teach their classes, and what I think they have done is assigned a lot more work. I don't know about all of you, but I feel like I attend the class and then there are so many assignments due after. What do you think? Do you think professors are giving extra work to try and make up for the class being online? Online? Should it be this way? Sorry, I honestly, I, I like what you said about how they're giving more assignments to make up for the class being online. I definitely think that's the case because now like being at home all the time for all of my schoolwork, I feel like I have so much and not enough hours in the day to mentally devote to doing my work. But then I'm thinking about the first half of my freshman year, the only thing that was normal, and 
I, I feel like I was getting my homework done so much more efficiently. And I was like going to two or three classes in person every day. And I'm thinking like, is it because I had less work? Like, was I able to get done in between? Like, I don't know. I really do agree that they're giving more assignments to like compensate for the fact that we're not in person. I agree with that 100%. Um, I mean, I was Alex too. We've been here for a while, so we knew what it was like to have those in-person classes. And I am literally drowning in assignments. And I'm like, it's one thing after another. And I understand that's what college is, is doing assignments. But it is definitely, I don't know if it's because like when we were in person, we had like that class time to work on stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, or we had like just work days. I feel like I really didn't have that many work days, but for sure I've noticed a significant difference um, from online classes to in-person classes of having more um, assignments when we're online. Mm -hmm. Weirdly enough, um, I don't agree. <gasps> Really? Isn't that wild? Oh yeah. God. Well, that's because I think um, because uh, Bella, you're what a sophomore? Yes. Okay, you're still probably taking a lot of non-specialized classes, right? You mean like Kent Core? Type yeah, of not stuff? yeah, kind of like Kent Core stuff like that, but yeah. like still like your kind of like 200 level like comm classes that are like trying to teach you a lot more. I'm literally in like these like 400 level specialized classes that only have like 12 kids in them, where we're like it's more project based. So I, I honestly felt, and I'm also taking like classes that I have to like uh, law of mass comm and like media. And I think that it's also the teachers that you get because my teachers are definitely like scaling back on like certain assignments. Now it doesn't mean that I'm still doing as well because <laughs> I, th I think that because I'm home all the time, I very much I'm just like, this is a lot of work anyway even if I know that it is a little bit scaled back, but I do know like there are a lot of teachers that are still giving the same amount of work. And so that this is just my experience with my teachers. Um, but I think it's because of the fact that like a lot of it's project based. Like I know for like, uh, um, what's it called? Broadcast reporting, usually they do like six packages. Now they're only doing four packages five. or five packages. So like, it's still like, it's only one less, which isn't that helpful when you're thinking about the fact that you have to like go out and interview people and like have a real story during a pandemic. Um, so like in that case, I could understand like this is still a lot of work for a pandemic. Yeah, but it's more of like people getting back to you. See, like I'm in a lot of project based classes where I have to have sources right. of real people and it's like it's hard to get people to reach back. And I think that's when it becomes more work because then I have to put it off because I can't do the work without right. the source. So then I put it off and then I have all of it like piled up because I'm waiting on people. Well, and like are your are your professors and like you don't have to talk about specifically the broadcast reporting, but like are some are your guys' like professors like like nice about it and yeah. they're like if you go to them being like, "Hey, this is a lot for me right now." Are they like, "Okay, like we can like figure out a new schedule or blah blah blah?" Or are they kind of like, "No, you have to be on deadline." I've never done that before but I think some people in my classes have okay yeah. like theirs hasn't been played or whatever. right yeah I've never personally asked a professor for a longer deadline like I've always just had like the really like high pressure on myself to, like get it done right but I do know I'm in um, intercultural communication right now and my professor I think gives us maybe two passes where if we want to turn an assignment a day late like we can and we don't have to like ask her anything so that was nice I already used it once so that's really the only experience I've had with that. Yeah, I would say that for sure they're way more understanding. Well, Portage County, unfortunately, that is all we have for today. Be sure to follow us on Instagram at the College Voice underscore KSU for more content and subscribe to us on YouTube at the College Voice where you can catch up on all of our latest episodes. See you next week. Your favorite weekly music show just got even better. We are now online serving all the needs of your favorite music media. You can check out our site for editorials and reviews from our writing staff featuring headline news and stellar illustrations from our design team. In the mood for your favorite artists? Check out links to our past episodes on this new and brilliant site. We are now one click away at KentCoreTV2.com. We are Kent Core. We are Music Driven Media. Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. How do you not love him?
Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org.